Hey there, welcome to episode 70 of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is just some of the new toys I've got since my last video. And it wasn't easy to decide what I was going to put in this video because I've got a lot of new toys this week. Um, now, usually when I get a whole mishmash of random things, I just do a mishmash kind of video where I show you everything I got. But uh, this particular week, I got like three kind of full distinct sets of figures. And so when I get a full wave of figures, I prefer to kind of break them up and just talk about that one particular wave, just in case there's somebody out there that's just searching for a particular review of this new wave of figures. And they don't have to sit through me talk about all the new stuff I got, things that they're not interested in. So I'm probably going to break up this week's toys into three um, shorter videos. Um, this first one here that I'm going to do, probably the shortest, because I've only really got uh, three figures to talk about in this particular series. So, in this episode, I'm going to be talking about my new black hole figures. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with the black hole, and you want to learn about it, I'm not the best one to explain it to you. Because it's it was a Disney movie that was released in 1979. And I was born in 1978, so I don't really, you know, I don't remember its release and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it was kind of, you know, it came out shortly after the original Star Wars. It, you know, it was probably Disney trying to capitalize on that, uh, you know, the popularity of science fiction at that point in time. But uh, let's just say it was no Star Wars. Um, however, I did see it as a kid. Um, it was probably on on TV or um, I don't know where I would have where I would have seen it but I know I did see it when I was very young and I don't really remember much of anything about the actual film to be honest with you but it always kind of had a little soft spot in my heart because I always loved little robots little monsters it often seemed when it came to movies and toy lines and stuff like this my brother my older brother Doug would tend to get like the hero character like for every batman figure he got i would get robin like i always kind of get the sidekicks so from the um like let's say the battlestar galactica the original movie i don't remember that very much either but you know i know i had seen it and i we had the toys of it so my brother he had all the the main characters and pretty much all I got was the little robot dog, Daggett, who was the little sidekick. And so I had a lot of fondness for just this one little character. And when it came to the black hole, I had Vincent. So it was a little three and three quarter inch. Um, well, it was to scale with three and three quarter inch, which was the size of the regular guys. But Vincent is more like a little R2-D2. So he was probably closer to two inches. And I had that figure. And I couldn't exactly play black hole when I was a kid because it was the only black hole toy I had and even Doug only had you know three or four of them so we would just kind of have to integrate them into you know when we played Star Wars or when we were just playing sometimes we just dump all the figures from our miscellaneous figure drawer out on the bed and we just kind of have a battle royale with all the random figures so that's how I played with Vincent um and we had um, my brother Doug he had a, a kind of an oversized graphic novel like adaptation of the movie so I remember the storyline more from the comic book than I do from the actual movie. Plus, I had um, a little a little book that came with a record. So you would play the record, and you would hear the voices, and they would like narrate the story and make all the sound effects and stuff. Um, I don't remember the specifics of it so much, but I can definitely picture the cover of it uh, You know that I had as a kid. Um, I think we might have had you know stickers and pencil cases. There was a decent amount of merchandising, I, I think, for this movie. And uh, so it's always been kind of like ingrained in my head, the idea of the movie, but not so much the details of the movie. Um, in order to, uh, to talk about it even just a little bit, I had to go, you know, watch some YouTube clips and read the Wikipedia page. And uh, even then, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the movie a whole lot. If you found this video, chances are it was because you searched for it and you already know the movie really well. Or if you're just somebody who watches my videos and you have no idea what I'm talking about, it might be worth uh, tracking down, or at the very least, if it sounds interesting, go check out some of the YouTube clips for yourself and see if it's worth, uh, you know, spending two hours of your time watching this watching this movie. 
But um, yeah, so Diamond Select Toys just released um, two sets of figures based on the black hole. And so one of them is Maximilian, who is the big evil robot. And the other one is a two-pack with Vincent, the little R2-D2 type droid that I had as a kid, as well as his kind of older, junkier counterpart, Bob. So I was really pleased to see that Vincent and Bob were in the same package together. Because when I had first seen these toys advertised a couple of months ago, um, it wasn't clear that they were came together because the, like the promotional images just showed all the figures individually. And like nowadays, when you buy like say a Star Wars Black Series figure for like thirty bucks, R two D two comes all by himself. You pay thirty bucks for him the same way you'd pay thirty bucks for Darth Vader, even though the size difference is you know it's it's a pretty big difference. And I kind of thought they'd probably do the same thing here. So if I had to spend 30 bucks to get Maximilian, I'd probably have to spend 30 to get Vincent and 30 to get Bob. Maybe they'd throw in some extra accessories to make it seem like Bob and Vincent were worth the same amount of money. But it's always tough paying that much money for just like a little teeny figure. So I was very pleased to see that they came packaged together and, you know, for the same price as Maximilian. And the other figure in this wave um, is actually the Rocketeer. So Rocketeer has nothing to do with these black hole figures, but they're just both Disney properties. And so Diamond Select Toys, I don't know, they must have a deal with Disney. I don't know if they'll be producing uh, more black hole figures or just more Disney figures in general. But uh, yeah, be curious to see what they do. Um, so to order these online at a lot of places, like I usually buy my stuff online from Big Bad Toy Store. You had to buy the whole set. And I really didn't want to buy the Rocketeer, even though I'm a big Rocketeer fan. I already have a six inch movie accurate Rocketeer figure. And this figure looked to be pretty much the same thing. I think the only difference maybe being a removable helmet, which is kind of cool, but it really wasn't worth it to me to pay 30 bucks US plus shipping, which translates, you know, we're talking close to 50 bucks for me to buy a figure that I already had. So I was hoping I could find them individually um, eventually. And fortunately, my local comic book shop, Strange Adventures, got these things in last week. And so, yeah, I was able to pick up Vincent, Bob, and Maximilian without having to buy uh, an additional Rocketeer. So, yeah, without uh, further ado, let's take a look at these figures. So here is Maximilian and Vincent and Bob from the Black Hole. You'll see them here inside the packaging. And I don't know if you can tell from this video, but these things are beastly in size. Like just to show you by comparison, here's a uh, Marvel Legend. And she's six inches. Uh, and these things are just huge. They're very heavy too. Let me get her out of here. There you see some imaging on the side. Looks like it's just some photos of the toys. And here's the back of the packaging. And you see here that it advertises that if you buy both sets, each of them comes with a component of uh, this piece here. So it's kind of like a two piece build a, build a play set type of thing. So I should be able to snap that thing together too once I uh, open these guys up. And let's do that right now. Okay, so let's first check out Maximilian. So here you see him from the front. And From the side, from the back. Now there's not much in the way of paint apps for this guy because he is basically just a big red robot. But you do see there's lots of nice little uh, kind of subtle weathering effects here, which really make him appear to be metal as opposed to just being a hunk of plastic. So just all these little paint dings and stuff, which looks like the red paint might have been scraped off of him, gives him a metallic look. So. The paint apps are, are there, um, they're just very subtle. So yeah, it looks pretty nice. And you see there he comes with a nice big display base. And display bases are always a problem with action figures. I'm constantly picking up all my Marvel Legends and stuff because they fall over. Some of them have holes in their feet, some of them don't. Some of them have big holes, some of them have little holes, so you can't get consistent stands for them even if you go out and try and buy third party stands. So it's always really nice when your action figure comes with a display base that works. 
And Maximilian would have needed a display base because he, he doesn't walk around, he hovers. So you can lift him off of this display base. And so yeah, this is how he hovered along in the movie, just like so. So yeah, you're, he really doesn't have the strength in his legs, I guess we'll call them, um, to hold him up. Although, yeah, he still stands okay. But if I had to put him on my shelf like that, I'd definitely be worried he'd be falling over because he is kind of top heavy. And actually, to my surprise, he feels pretty solid like that. But still, it's nice to have the display base, um, if for no other reason, just so it allows him to kind of have that hovering effect. So now let's take a look at the articulation a little bit. So to, for his legs, you see there's joints here on the side. So they can go pretty far out on either way. So he kind of does the splits there. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't know what kind of articulation you really need out of this guy because I don't really remember the specifics of the movie. So I don't know how many poses he went into. But uh, so his legs do go up and down. These little panels on the side, there's some movement there, but not a ton. Um, he does spin at the waist. So you can spin him around like that. His head uh, is fully articulated as well. So you can spin that around. And for his arms, so you see here he's got like three arms on both sides of him. And they all, they're attached to this circular piece. And this circular piece spins around. So you can you can probably swivel it all the way around if I straightened all of his arms out. Or like put them all down. Currently it's kind of hard to spin it around because I've got his arms kind of out in all these different directions. Um, and then he's got articulation in the individual arms as well. So kind of like elbow joints there. So yeah, pretty cool. And now I've got him displayed here just how he was, how he came in the packaging. But you do have some options with his hands. So you see here he's got, this one here is just like a closed little point. This one here, he's got his spinning blade hand, which he uses to kill one of the good guys in the movie. Just kind of shreds him up. And then he's got this hand here, which has got, I don't know, kind of like a taser hand. It kind of looks like just maybe it's another blade that's closed. But then they also give this electricity effect, the kind of things you see with Marvel Legends all the time. So it's kind of like a soft translucent blue purple just to give the, the look of kind of like electricity coming out of his hand there. So let's take a look at some of his accessories now. Because he's got quite a few. So he's got another one of the, the closed claws. So if you didn't want him displaying with his spinning blade hand, you could replace that with another, another closed hand. Now, if you want to take his other hand that's currently closed and you want to make them both spinning hands, we've got another one of the spinning blades there. And if you wanted to make either of those effects look like they actually are spinning in movement, he's got these two hands. So you see it's kind of got that whirling effect so it kind of looks like the blade is currently spinning and he's coming at you. So he's got two of those. And he also has another one of the, uh, the electric effects. So I don't know if that's just something he can do when he's not spinning his claws, but the way they displayed it in the packaging with the electricity coming out of the closed claw, I guess you could put his other closed claw on there and give him another kind of electric bolt coming out of the hand there. So you've got some options, so that's pretty cool. And the final option you've got is, you know, it's not super obvious at first why they would give you this, but he's got an alternate head. So let me just pop his head off and we'll get a closer look at it. So it just pops right out of the peg there. So this is how I always remembered Maximilian, just this kind of faceless robot. So he's got the clear translucent red visor, um, but you can't see anything in it. Now, I only know this from reading the Wikipedia page, but... I guess in the end of the movie, when he kind of gets cast out of the out of this ship and thrown into the black hole, him and his uh, kind of evil human creator get merged together or something. So Reinhardt becomes part of Maximilian. So this alternate head they give you, it's pretty much the exact same, except you can see he's got Reinhardt's eyes in there and even kind of the top of Reinhardt's nose. So it looks like it's kind of got some sculpted detail inside of that helmet. So if you want to display him specific to that one scene uh, at the end of the movie, once he gets merged with Reinhardt and ends up uh, kind of screaming atop the mountain in hell, then you could do that. 
I personally like the uh, the eyeless head. I want to just display Maximilian as kind of the creepy silent robot that I remember him being. So I'll keep that on there like so. And there you go. That's really all I have to say about Maximilian. He's, he's really cool looking. The fact that he can stand with or without the display base is really nice. He's got a good weight to him. Uh, he feels like a pretty good quality. Now he does feel like he's got some delicate parts too. If he ever did fall off the shelf, I'm sure all these little arms would break. But he doesn't feel like he's going to break just from uh, you know fiddling around with him. I think he's a really cool toy. For me in Canada, he was 39 bucks. Um, but I think he's totally worth that. That's about 10 bucks more than I pay for a, a six inch Marvel legend. But, uh, not only is this guy bigger, he's just such a, uh, kind of such a niche market. I don't think there's a ton of people out there looking for, uh, black hole merchandise right now. But if you're one of those people that think black hole was cool, or maybe you're a new fan and you just, you kind of dig this video, I do recommend you go check this guy out because it's, uh, it's something different and it's something cool. Now, before I move on to the other figures, I just want to show you the kind of the build a play set that they came with. So Maximilian came with um, this one plastic wall, which is black on the back, kind of that maroon, which kind of matches his paint job on the front. And it came with this cardboard sleeve, which has kind of graphics on both sides. They're pretty similar both ways. And that just slides, slides in there. And so then the other set with Maximilian, or sorry, with uh, Vincent and Bob, it came with this kind of graded floor, which has got a nice sculpted texture to it. And also this railing, which doesn't fit in the holes that it's supposed to so good for me. Maybe if, maybe it just requires a little bit more uh, forceful pushing for it to fit into those pegs, but this is pretty thin plastic and I'm a little scared to break it. Plus, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this piece out to display my figures on. So I don't want to force this thing into place and then realize I want to tuck it away in a bin somewhere, in which case it would probably be better to store without this thing forced inside of it. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it right now, but uh, it's cool that it comes with it. Like this is the kind of thing I would expect for them to put in, say half of it in Vincent's and half of it in Bob's packaging so they could sell them both individually for 40 bucks a piece and justify it with this kind of extra, you know, base that nobody really needs or asked for. But the fact that they kind of just threw it in as a bonus, uh, I think is, is awesome. So yeah really cool to get that and there were some pieces in inside of I think it was came in Bob and Vincent's package so these three things here um, and I didn't know what they were at first but I'm guessing what they are is on the bottom of the base you see these little pegs so you can attach the pegs like so now mind you, it only came with three and yet there's four pegs so I'm not sure why why there's not four of them but anyway, anyway, so what it looks like, it would allow you to attach additional pieces. So if they continue, if they put out more figures with another base, rather than have to just kind of sit them loosely beside one another, they would probably snap together and you can make like a wider backdrop, which is pretty cool. And it's promising the fact that they even went so far to do this in that uh, it seems to me that if these sell well, we probably will get additional black hole figures. Because I know I would really like to get um, some of the sentry figures. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Oh, there you go. So, a neat little add-on. Okay, so now let's take a look at Vincent and Bob. Now, so here you see them. Here's the front. Before I spin them around or anything, I'm going to show you some of the accessories they came with because they came with quite a bit. How I've got them displayed is how they came in the packaging. So, first off, they have their display bases. So, they both have this clear circle display base, and then they've got an arm that connects to their back. Now you've got some options with those. It came with a bunch of additional pieces. So yeah, these are all additional pieces that I have for each one. So an additional long piece and an additional short piece and the hinges, um, you can just take off of there. So these all kind of connect and disconnect. So I, I guess you could have the display base much higher. So you could attach this to the back of this and you could have, you know, Vincent displayed way up here. Um, the problem I find with these things is it's problematic that these things do just come apart so easily. Um, and also they're pretty loose uh, in the package and these guys are pretty heavy. 
So I was trying for ages to get them to display and they were toppling over and falling right off or the, this would come out of there. And it was just a bit of a nightmare trying to get these guys on their display bases. So I went with the simplest configuration. So I just have the longest piece with a hinge at the bottom and a hinge at the top. And the hinge just plugs into the little hole that these guys have on the back, about halfway down their back. So right now I've got Vincent displayed okay. Bob, same thing. Although he still feels a little loose. I just dropped him a second ago actually and I was scared to death he was going to break because I saw a piece fly off of him. But it ended up just being the, uh, the little hinge coming off. Anyway, so I am a little nervous that these guys are going to tumble off of this table here. But uh, So let's take a look at some of the other accessories. So first off, we get these two things which are replacement legs. Now, uh, I don't know if Bob's even come out. I think most of these accessories are intended for Vincent. Because Bob, as you can see, he was all beat up. He was this old old droid that they found on the ship already. Um, the basic premise is Vincent was with a crew on a new ship. They found this other ship they thought was abandoned. They got on board, and that's when they found all the bad guys, and they met Bob. So Vincent's a kind of a newer, updated model. And rarely did you see him with his legs um kind of out in the movie you know they, you had the option to pull them out same as with the old figure i had but most of the time he had them tucked in so i haven't taken any of these things out yet but if i take out his legs so it just you know plugs in like that and then you plug in one of these ones bear with me a second not the easiest thing to do here we go so now it gives the idea that his legs are kind of retracted. So you can do that with both of those. And that would probably present the, uh, the more well-known look for him um, when he hovers around with his legs tucked inside. So that's kind of cool. Now it's one of those things where I kind of wonder like, would it have been so hard for Diamond Select to just make these things pull in and push back out? Like, so it's nice that they gave us the option, but this just means I have a bunch of extra pieces that I'm going to have to lay around in a bag somewhere and there's a better chance you could lose them. Whereas it'd be pre preferable if these things just pushed in and pushed out. Same as with all these other pieces I'm going to show you. So you see here he's got the little arms on the side. So both of them. It's not like he walked around with those things all the time in the, in the movie. So you can take those out. And so the little claw at the end. So the way it would work in the movie is this would just retract and the claw would tuck in there. So that's exactly what you have here. You have a little plugged in uh, claw. Now I actually don't want to stick that in there. I'm sure it fits in just fine, but then I'm probably gonna have to wrestle with it to get it out again. It doesn't look like it would be super easy to get out again once you plugged it in there all the way. So and even now I feel it might have, I might have pushed it in, there we go. So I'll leave that out for now. Um, what else does he get? So then on the side here, you see he's got these little panels. So the panels open up and he's got additional claws there. Now you can actually, and again, I haven't done this yet, so I'm not sure how hard it is to do. I don't have much in the way of nails, but this, uh, this claw pops out. Oh, he's coming off his base here. So that claw comes out and you have the option to put these extended claws in there instead. So now you can be reaching his claws out from the front rather than on the side. And he actually does have the four open claws. So you could actually have him with all four claws poking out, or you could have, I think Bob does the same thing there. You could replace his claw too, if you want to have these claws. Right now he's got one out and one in. So yeah, you've got some display options here. And lastly, and again, I'm not even gonna to try to pull these things out because it looks like you'd really have to get your nail in there for this. But these things here, what he uses, there's a scene when he has kind of a sharp shooting laser match with uh, one of the evil droids. And so those things come out and they're lasers. So you can see the extended one here. And it's got that clear plastic around it, which maybe just because they thought if they just had the thin red thing there, it would be too fragile and it easily break. I don't know if the clear stuff is accurate to the movie, but either way, it looks all right. So you could plug that in there in its place and that way you would have the extended laser out. So again, I'm not gonna bother doing that right now, but he's got, he's got two of those. Uh, he's got two of the little tucked in claws. So you can do that on both sides. And then the little door closes again. So yeah, he's got some options. 
Uh, another little thing here is if you flip this down, he's got another little port there. And there's one other little accessory. It kind of looks like a little microphone. Or maybe it's something he uses to hack into the computer the way R2-D2 does with his little arm there. Uh, I think I'd seen somebody else talking about it online that it's actually a little drill or something that pops out that he uses to fight Maximilian when he's fighting the big evil robot. So it's something anyway. So if you're wondering what that is, because one thing I should note is that the there's no instructions that came with these toys. So it just came with a whole bunch of pieces. And unless you really remember the movie and say, oh yeah, his lasers come out or he had a little saw that comes out of here or whatever, like uh, you probably wouldn't know what to do with this stuff. So I had to do a little bit of research to find out about all that stuff. Now, one thing I do remember about the vintage toy is that his head could tuck inside of him like this, like a little turtle shell. So this one still does the same. So that's pretty cool. And I'd done that when I first got him. And then when I was pulling his head out, I noticed his this gray shell was kind of coming up higher than it was originally. And I was like, oh, crap, I'm going to pull his head right off and break him. But it wasn't until I watched another little review of him online is that that's actually a whole other feature on its own is that you can lift his head up and you can see his little brain underneath with that clear plastic dome. And again, I don't remember this myself, but apparently there's a scene in the movie where he does get like uh, electrocuted or something and his head kind of springs up and you see his brain there. So it might take a little bit of effort to get it just back the way it's supposed to be. But there you go. So quite a bit of uh, display options here with Vincent. Less so with Bob, but uh, Bob looks pretty great. So let's get a closer look at him. So you see here where uh, Vincent's got the like the little monitor screen on his chest. His is kind of broken off, so you just see some exposed wires. He's all banged up here. One of his legs is broken off. And that's intentional. That's how he looked in the movie. So he doesn't have as many panels. Like here, this doesn't come out. So he doesn't have the option to give him sides, arms on the side, at least. I don't think so, anyway. And, uh, yeah. His head doesn't tuck all the way in, but he does kind of... He has some articulation, so he can spit his head around and kind of bow his head and hide a little bit. So, yeah. There's Bob. And so these guys, I might actually use that display base... For these guys partly because I am a little worried if I put them on my shelf with just these that they would topple over so the fact that they can kind of go on here and maybe lean against the backdrop a little bit might might give them that little extra level of protection so I'll feel <laughs> see uh, I'll feel safer about them uh, being here so there you go so that is my uh, review of Diamond Select Toys, new black hole figures, Maximilian, Vincent, Bob. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please, uh, you know, hit like below, maybe subscribe to the channel, and uh, please leave me a comment below. So uh, yeah, that's it. Now I'm going to go ahead and probably shoot my next video to talk about some of the other new toys I got. So I'll see you soon.